Hi, I'd like to start by apologizing for using an AI voice. My English isn't strong enough for me to confidently use my own voice. The tutorial starts at the 6 minute mark if you prefer to skip the process explanation. The majority of modern movies are now graded using the latest CMV 4.0 Dolby Vision algorithm. This advanced algorithm offers backward compatibility with older hardware, ensuring seamless playback across a wide range of devices. However, due to the fact that all current Blu-ray players are equipped with outdated CMV 2.9 SoC hardware, and with no new players on the horizon, most movies intended for Blu-ray release are still delivered in the older CMV 2.9 format. The Dolby Vision workflow begins with an automated analysis that generates level 1 metadata. This metadata is the same for both CMV 2.9 and CMV 4.0 algorithms, providing a foundational layer for the grading process. Following this initial step, the colorist meticulously reviews each shot, mirroring the process used to create the HDR master. During this stage, the colorist adjusts the tone mapping to align with their artistic vision, focusing on specific brightness targets. Typically, the adjustments are made for 100 nits SDR and the values are extrapolated to any TV target. In rare cases, additional adjustments may also be made for higher brightness levels, such as 600 nits or 1000 nits. These manual refinements are captured in level 8 metadata, which provides extensive control over tone mapping. However, it's worth noting that these artistic trims are entirely optional. If the colorist is satisfied with the default tone mapping generated by the initial analysis, no further adjustments are necessary. In CMV 4.0i, the system automatically generates level 2 artistic trims, even in cases where the colorist opts not to make any manual adjustments. These auto-generated level 2 trims are designed to simulate the improved tone mapping capabilities of CMV 4.0 when content is played back on CMV 2.9 hardware. Should the colorist decide to modify the level 8 trims, the level 2 trims are updated automatically to reflect those changes, ensuring consistency across all playback scenarios. When a CMV 4.0 workflow is adapted for delivery in CMV 2.9, as is the case for Blu-ray releases, there is an inherent loss of quality. This is because Level 2 metadata, while functional, is a simplified conversion that aims to replicate the tone mapping the colorist observed on their professional grading monitor. By contrast, Level 8 metadata offers far greater precision and flexibility, with 20 individual controls compared to just 6 in Level 2. CMV 4.0 also introduces additional metadata levels, such as Level 3, which serves as an offset to Level 1, and Level 9, which provides shot-by-shot -shot metadata specifying the mastering display primaries. These enhancements help improve the alignment of XML data with the bitstream metadata, ensuring more accurate representation of the graded content. Another innovation in CMV 4.0 is Level 11, which relates to Dolby Vision IQ, a feature designed to optimize viewing based on ambient lighting conditions. However, Level 11 is utilized only in non-accurate modes like Cinema Home on LG TVs. It is ignored when viewing in the proper and accurate Cinema mode. In summary, while CMV 4.0 represents a significant leap forward in Dolby Vision grading technology, its adaptations for CMV 2.9 hardware inevitably involve compromises. These adaptations are necessary to maintain compatibility with existing Blu-ray players but they come at the cost of reduced precision and fewer artistic controls in the final presentation. Web streaming services have fully embraced CMV 4.0 Dolby Vision, ensuring that viewers can enjoy the advanced tone mapping and dynamic metadata capabilities this technology offers. However, it's important to note that streaming platforms predominantly use Dolby Vision Profile 5 rather than Profile 7. While Profile 5 allows for excellent HDR playback with dynamic metadata embedded directly in the video stream, it lacks the enhancement layer found in Profile 7, which is critical for delivering the highest possible quality. Most popular streaming devices, including the Apple TV and Nvidia Shield, are limited to single-layer playback. While these devices do support CMV 4.0's dynamic metadata, they discard the enhancement layer entirely 
even if the content was initially graded for Profile 7. This limitation means that these devices only utilize the Reference Processing Unit, RPU, metadata, leading to a viewing experience that, while functional, falls short of the true potential of Dolby Vision. Fortunately, some advanced devices, such as the Yuga's AM6B+, are equipped with the dual decoder hardware required for Profile 7 playback and support the latest CMV 4.0. These devices can fully decode and utilize both the enhancement layer and the RPU metadata, delivering a complete Dolby Vision experience. By combining CMV 4.0 dynamic metadata with the full enhancement layer, these devices offer the best possible quality, surpassing what even the best Blu-ray players can provide. In this video, I'll show you how to go one step further. I'll demonstrate how to extract the CMV 4.0 block from streaming service files and integrate it into a Profile 7 CMV 2.9 RPU. This process effectively restores the original Dolby Vision grade, unlocking the best possible visual quality. The first step involves extracting the RPU metadata file from both sources, the CMV 2.9 Blu-ray RIP, and the CMV 4.0 web streaming RIP. Open the latest version of Dolby Vision scripts. Choose Workflow 1 from the menu, drag and drop the files, skip the dual input option when prompted and select the option E to extract the RPU. This will generate the required metadata files for further processing. Here, I'm extracting the scene cut list for each file. This step is optional and can be skipped. I'm only including it to demonstrate that my sources are not synchronized with each other. Now, let's determine how many frames need to be removed or duplicated in the web streaming CMV 4.0 source to synchronize it with the Blu-ray Profile 7 RPU. Open Dolby Vision scripts and select Workflow 9.1, then drag and drop the two RPU files from the Blu-ray and web sources. This workflow can automatically detect the frame delay between the sources, but you should never fully trust the result. Always verify manually with the exported frames and find two identical frames from each source, and calculate the delay yourself. In this case, the delay to apply is minus 24 frames. Since the script relies on scene cuts, it might not be able to detect the delay from movies with long, continuous shots. For such cases, I'll also explain how to manually identify the frame difference. Now let's perform the same task, but without using the script's auto mode. Select Workflow 9.1 again and input the files. This time, choose the manual mode, which will launch a software tool with the source frames indexed for precise analysis. In one of the videos, navigate to a scene cut and note the frame number. Then, in the second video, find the same scene cut, note its frame number, and calculate the frame difference between the two videos.
Now that we know the frame difference, let's transfer the CMV 4.0 block to the Profile 7 RPU. The levels that need to be transferred are 3, 8, and 9. I've never encountered a movie with level 11 metadata, but if you do, make sure to transfer that as well. Input the Profile 7 RPU first, followed by the CMV 4.0 RPU. When prompted, enter 389, without spaces between the numbers, and then input the delay value. Once the levels are transferred, let's verify that the RPUs are properly synced by extracting the scene cuts from each file and checking if they align. It's normal for the first or last scene cuts to differ. What matters is that all the other scene cuts are correctly synchronized. This step could technically be done first, but since most movies from web streaming and Blu-ray share the same metadata and only differ in the CM version, I always perform this step last with the synced RPU. Open Dolby Vision scripts and select Workflow 6-4 to to plot the level 2 trims for the synced web RPU and the Profile 7 RPU. Ensure that the trims are the same for both sources, though small, negligible differences are acceptable. As you can see, the level 2 trims of both sources are identical and perfectly in sync. Finally, let's inject the newly created Profile 7 CMV 4.0 RPU into the Blu-ray Remux file. Open Dolby Vision scripts and drag and drop the base layer video file first, followed by the RPU files. Once the files are loaded, skip all the user prompts and let the script process the files. This will embed the updated RPU into the Blu-ray Remux, ensuring that the metadata are properly integrated. Wait for the process to finish and your final video will be ready with the new metadata applied. That's it. 
As you can see, the file created now contains the CMV 4.0 block, with the updated metadata properly injected into the Blu-ray Remux. Everything should be in sync and ready for use. Thank you for watching and please like, subscribe and comments.